so what we will want to do is we will want to make sure that we modify our uh, smart road script that is on our smart three-way uh, parent object uh, that it can take into consideration those events so we will click on those three dots in the uh, near the smart road or open the scripts ai and open up the smart roads script great now what we would like to do is we would like to make sure that we can read the events or get the events from our smart crosswalks and make sure that our smart road respects the pedestrians that are standing and waiting around for being uh, to be able to cross the road so we are going to create boolean flags so let's create private bool and let's call them pedestrian waiting and a second one will be pedestrian walking let's set both of those to be false by default because otherwise unity might give us a warning that they are not assigned great and we can add a serialized field attribute to those so that we can see those in unity inspector so the idea behind those two flags is that we are going to set the pedestrian waiting true whenever pedestrian enters the collider of the smart crosswalks object next we are going to see if the last car that was on the intersection has left or if there are no cars on the intersection if there are no cars cars we are going to set the pedestrian walking to true and then no more cars will be allowed to uh, cross the intersection and the pedestrian walking will be set to false only when we get the information from the cross uh, smart crosswalks that no more pedestrians are here to uh, cross the crossroad and we are going to set the walking and waiting boolean flags to be false and only then we are going to allow another car or other cars to start driving through the intersection and to inform our pedestrians that there are no more cars or that all, all car has stopped we are going to need another unity event so let's type prop tab tab again let's type unity event alt enter because we will need to be using unity event engine dot events library and let's call this event we are going to call it on pedestrian can walk so let's save it let's again add a an attribute here so field colon serialized field so that we can set this uh, unit event through the inspector and this event will be sent by our smart road when our cars have stopped and the last car has left the intersection or there are no more cars waiting to cross the intersection so on trigger enter will not be modified because it only adjusts the cars and the traffic queue in the update we will need to take this logic into consideration so if our current car is null if traffic dot count is uh, less than zero and we will need to check if our pedestrian are waiting equals false and if our pedestrians walking so make sure that waiting and walking are different parameters is equals to false great so only then we will be able to uh, make our cars travel through the intersection and else let's add else if and here we are going to add pedestrian walking or pedestrian waiting we are going to make sure that we call on pedestrian can walk question mark dot invoke and we are going to make sure that we send this event and there might be a case when only pedestrian waiting is true and if it is so we are going to set our pedestrian walking equals true so let's slide it down and now we will need to add some logic for our events so let's create a new method here public void set pedestrian flag and we are going to take bool value so let's call it val okay and here we are going to uh, use this method to send from our smart crosswalks messages to our smart road if the pedestrian wants to cross the road or not so if val is true we are going to set our pedestrian uh, waiting equals true now else if value is false so that we want to set the pedestrian flag uh, to false we will want to set pedestrian waiting equals false and we will want to set pedestrian 
walking equals false. Great. Now, as I look at this code, I do believe that uh, pedestrian walking bool is redundant, but let's save it. Let's see what we have achieved. Great. So we are going to finish assigning the event. So let's choose the parent object of the street three-way. Let's add an event to our smart road, and we are going to drag our smart crosswalks here as the object, and select a method smart crosswalks, and we have move pedestrian. And for our smart crosswalks, we are going to minimize the box colliders since we do not need to have those uh, maximized. And what we can do is add to the pedestrian on pedestrian enter. Let's drag our street through a, and choose the smart road, and let's choose set pedestrian bull flag. So in pedestrian enter, we want to set it to be true. And on pedestrian exit, let's do exactly the same. Drag the street through a, select the smart road, set pedestrian flag, and let's set it to be false. We can save the prefab choosing Ctrl S to save. And let's copy this component smart crosswalk. So right click and copy. And let's open up the prefabs folder, road, and let's select the road the street four way. Let's open it up. And we can paste this uh, object. So uh, right click in the hierarchy and paste. And we have our smart crossbox. So what we should see is that we have our uh, colliders. But we are missing one. So let's select the collider that is the correct one. So um, I believe smart crosswalk, and I believe this will be the last one. So let's click on those three dots, copy the component, again click on those three dots and paste this as new component. We can choose those three dots and move component up so it is above the smart crosswalk. And what we can say here is that if we rotate a bit our component it is all on x axis and our box collider that was copied was on uh, center was on x.25 so we need to add simply a minus here and we should be good to go and yes here we have created the fourth collider and it is and it is set similarly to the copied collider so now let's minimize the box colliders and let's make sure that we assign our switch four way as the on pedestrian enter and on pedestrian exit uh, object, choose, select the function smart road, and we should have the, the set pedestrian flag to true and smart road uh, in the on pedestrian exit uh, set pedestrian flag to false. And for the street four way, let's add a event on pedestrian can walk. Let's uh, drag our smart crosswalk, to select function smart crosswalk, and move pedestrians. Great. Let's cont control S to save it. Now what we have to do is we will need to make sure that our pedestrians can use a rigid body to move and that they have appropriate colliders so that they can interact with our smart road objects. So we are going to go to prefabs to people. Let's open the female casual and we can see that we have our agent and on it is a, our agent AI agent controller and it has a collider. So we are going to modify the collider first to make sure that this collider is a bit smaller. I'm going to use the axis tool to make sure that I'm looking from the top. And I'm going to make this collider a bit smaller. So we are going to make sure that this is a bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to use x-axis. So let's click those three dots on our box collider and copy the component. And let's paste this box collider to other prefabs of the pedestrian. So let's control S, save it, and let's open female dress, save the prefab, and paste the values for the box collider on the existing box collider. So click on those three dots and paste values. Save it, control S, male casual, again, just the same. Click on those three dots on the box collider and paste component as values, save it, and male suit those three dots and paste component as values. Okay, great. And now we will also need to add here rigid body. So add component rigid body. And let's open it up. I'm going to close the box collider and AI agent. Actually, we can leave the AI agent opened. And what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we are not using gravity for this and that we freeze rotation on X and Z so that it cannot be, uh, it will not fall down. Uh, Copy this component again using rigid body three dots and copy component. Control S to save it. Go back to male casual and paste the rigid body 
you click on those three dots on any component and paste as new component the rigid body. The control S, save it female dress, do the same, paste as new component, save female casual, and paste the rigid body component. Great, let's save it. Now we should test first of all if our pedestrians are still able to walk through our city. So let's press play. Let's place a road, a house on one side, a special uh, structure on another, spawn our agents, and you can see that the agents are correctly moving forward. Let's stop it. And what we want to do is also, we want to modify the uh, animator for our pedestrian. So let's select our uh, top menu, window, animation, and let's open the animator. And let's select a female casual. And since those all use the same human animator component, we will only need to modify it, uh, modify it once. So we currently are using trigger to trigger our animation. So instead, we want to add here using the plus icon near the parameters. Uh, so to the left of our animator, we're going to use plus icon, add bool, and delete the walk trigger. So uh, delete uh, on the keyboard and delete it. And let's rename our bool to walk with capital W. Now all we need to do is click on the line on the transition between human armature female idle to female walk. Select it and we are going to set the walk to be the condition to be true. And let's click on the uh, female walk animation. Right click, make transition, drag it towards the female idle. Select it and select conditions. Uncheck the has exit time and add conditions. So use this plus icon in the edit inspector walk and let's set it to be false. Okay, make sure that the walk boolean flag is unchecked by default. And let's save it, control S. And we can uh, select the female dress and it will have the same uh, animator, male casual and male suit, also the same animator. So it should work for all pedestrians. Let's now press play and let's test it again if it all works. Place house, place special structure, spawn an agent. And you can see that our agents are performing the uh, walk animation. What we can do is pause it and select one of those pedestrians or actually we can exit the prefab set up using the arrow underneath the hard key. Let's select the male suit and let's select the animator. Let's uncheck the animation walk and let's press play. And now you can see that it is not playing the animation. So this is great. It means that our animations are set correctly. And one more thing that I think I have forgotten to do was to set the colliders to be triggers. So let's go to our road. Let's select street three way, open it up. Let's select the scene view in the instead of animator. And I will need to select the smart crosswalks, open the colliders and make sure that I set them to be triggers. Great. And let's control S to save it. And let's open street four way. And again, let's select the smart crosswalks and set the box colliders to be triggers. Now it should all work. So let's save it. Let's go back to the scene view using the arrow underneath the hard key to exit the prefab view. And let's press play. Let's create a four way. Okay, I'm going to place three houses and a special structure. And let's spawn our agents. Let's spawn our cars. We should see that the cars should travel in the same fashion that they have. Let's spawn another cars. And let's see what happens if the pedestrians uh, enter the crosswalk. We can see that the pedestrian is waiting. It crosses the street and then only then the car is traveling through the crosswalk, uh, through the intersection. Okay, so it seems like it is working. Let's spawn another cars and another pedestrians just to check it out. The cars will stop, the one will go, another cars. The pedestrian should be here. Great, we have our cars. The pedestrian is going to cross the crosswalk. It is waiting for the car to go through the intersection. Now the pedestrian crosses and then the car will follow when the pedestrian is out of the intersection. Great, so it should now work fine. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, if you did, leave a like, leave a comment, and if you want to learn more, I have a new Udemy course on making a 2D shooter game, where we explore how to create a 2D shooter, as well as how to add juiciness, so the audio and visual feedback to make this more appealing to players. There will be a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, take care.